I want to show you guys a real quick video on maintaining your pond plants. This area here is a wetland filter and this wetland filter is responsible for the water clarity inside this beautiful amazing pond here. Now this pond measures out at about 4,000 gallons from end to end is about 22 feet, 25 feet and from this side here also from end to end is about maybe 25, 30 feet. You have two skimmers. One skimmer is powering the wetland and the second skimmer is powering also the wetland but it's also powering these two little cool little uh, fountainscapes. Today what I want to talk to you about is I want to talk to you about this particular plant. It's commonly referred to as an umbrella palm um, or a dwarf umbrella and I want to talk to you guys about how invasive a plant this is. It's a beautiful plant and it grows so quickly. But what I want to draw your attention to are these guys right here. This is the reason why this plant is so invasive because they just grow like mad. And then also look at this one here. I'm going to cut that, come back and I'm going to cut this guy out because what happens with these plants, if you don't maintain them, if you don't cut these flowers here off, then these flowers are going to find their way into your pond. And this plant here, believe it or not, in a very short amount of time, will completely overtake this wetland. It's a real mess. So when we go to cut off this guy here, you see how pretty it is? Beautiful flowers on the top, but what we want to do is we want to come all the way down here to the bottom and we want to cut that off. No big deal. It's simple maintenance. Let's go back over here to the back and let's talk about the cannas. Cannas also are really great plants for your wetland because they just suck up and absorb so much nutrient as, um, as well as some of the other guys that you see inside here. Taro, this is an amazing phosphate eater. This plant here just consumes phosphate. And if you want to know a thing or two about what phosphate does, phosphate feeds your algae. One of the reasons why this plant is doing, or this pond is so clear, in addition to this wetland filter here, is these guys also. You see those taros? I'm gonna bring you guys down so that you can see them a little bit closer. So when we plant a pond, we like to make sure that that pond is well planted with things that are gonna consume the food sources that wants to feed algae. So overall this wetland measures about 12 feet long by about six feet wide. And it's feeding a really nice waterfall over here as well as these guys too. You guys want to see this pond? I'm going to take you guys around. I'm going to show you. But it's really also super important that you pay attention to what I just taught you in this video, especially with that umbrella palm. That umbrella palm is, is an invasive species. It does a great, great, great job. But every week when you're out, especially during the growing season, you've got to cut those plants back. You've got to keep them trimmed. So let's see if we can find some other stuff that needs to be maintained. Let's talk about these guys here, the taros. You can see by the size of my hand um, how big the leaf is. Taro is a great plant. It consumes phosphate. Phosphate is a food source for algae. I've already mentioned that. We want to let this grow. Um, at the beginning of the growing season this year, and mind you, I want you to know this pond is brand new this year. This is its first summer. You see how much growth has already happened throughout this waterfall, throughout this pond. Um, Parrot feather. Parrot feather is a great plant. Um, I like this because it's going to kind of grow out over the edge around this stump. The fish like to kind of chomp at it. But let's go over here and let's look at the bacopa. So bacopa is again, it's a really beautiful plant. Look at the little flowers, you see these guys? It's a beautiful ground cover. And the bacopa plant is just gonna grow out like mad. Check this out. Look at this. See these roots? I could take this guy here and I could break him off and I could replant this little plant right here and in no time at all, it'll turn into this. Kinda like what I did right over here. I did that maybe just a few weeks ago. So let's say, then I want this plant to grow into this area over here. Then all I have to do is kind of cover it up a little bit with maybe a little bit of gravel. And away we go. We're good. One of the reasons why 
um, I'm pointing out the Bacopa to you is because Bacopa, as well as the umbrella palm, Bacopa is going to invasively grow out and choke out your stream beds. Now, this is another one of those things where you've got to do a lot of maintenance. You want to pull these guys back, keep them nice and keep them, keep them nice and trimmed. Don't let it choke out your stream bed. And if you have some that you cut off that you want to transplant, find a nice place for it. You know, like maybe in between this log here. We've got this beautiful log spillway. Maybe we might want to put some bacopa right here and let it grow down into this little area over here into this void. So whatever you can do to get creative with your plant trimmings, do it. But make sure that as you have this beautiful water guard, this beautiful koi pond, make sure that you take the time to trim these things back. One other thing I want to point out to you. I already cleaned it up uh, this afternoon. But in this area of the wetland here, there's a big, huge growth of string algae. Now, string algae ordinarily in a wetland filter doesn't really bother me too much because string algae also eats phosphate. And if there's going to be any place at all in the pond where I want string algae to grow, it's going to be inside the wetland. It's going to be in the filter area. However, what I also don't want it to do is become invasive. So let's talk about that real quick. See this algae that's growing on the side of this rock here? I'm okay with that. I like that a lot. See a little bit of algae that's growing on the side of this spillway right there? I'm okay with that. I like that a lot. And the reason why I like this to grow here on the side of this spillway as well as on the side of this fountain over here is because it kind of gives off a natural patina. But this, this string algae here that's trying to form, I say let it go. Because again, it's eating the phosphates, it's providing a very healthy draw of nutrients in competition, in direct competition with algae. So also let's talking about algae. What about this stuff here growing on the rocks here? I say, leave that alone, let that go. Here on the, on the rocks and the gravel inside the stream, let that do its thing. All of this stuff is actually a really, really important part of the ecosystem. And this is the reason why this is so crystal clear. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions about how to maintain your pond, if you have questions about how to build a proper wetland filter, if you have questions about some of the things that you see in this project here, um, ask me. I built it. This is my work. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. And this is months worth of growth. All of these plants are baby plants, just a few months old. All of this gardening over here, babies, just a few months old. But I hope this helps you guys. Oh, one last thing before we're done. Let's take a look at this area here by this waterfall. See this algae growth that's growing all over this log and the bacopa that's growing up kind of bring you in nice and close. What do you guys think of that? I say keep it, leave it alone. But what if string algae is growing up and over the top of this rock here? What are you going to do with that? I say get rid of it. Because this is a really highly functional um, part of the aesthetics of the pond. We really don't want to let this completely get overgrown. I like what we see here. This is really nice. Okay. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to have a whole bunch of string algae just choking out and making a mess out of things. So in all, I would give the homeowner a solid 10. I'd give my maintenance manager and my little brother, John, a solid two. I'm just kidding, love the guy. But this is what a properly maintained, fully functioning ecosystem with a beautiful wetland should look like and the way that you should maintain it. If you stumbled across my channel by accident, please do me a solid. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to us and if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. And like always, I'm Carl with Plenty of Water Gardens. So I'm here to remind you how to properly maintain the plants within your wetland. Happy ponding.